students, this is part one of a video lecture for chapter two, Accounting for Business Transactions. I want to start this chapter with actually with information that is actually covered at the end of chapter three. I want to show you the accounting cycle and its nine steps. This is what we are doing in the first three chapters, really. We are completing the accounting cycle for a simple service-based um, corporation. By service-based, I mean uh, it's a company that does not sell any merchandise, does not sell any tangible goods. We're selling services, such as a consulting firm. Uh, so in your textbook on page 123, you can 122 123 you can find this accounting cycle and so there is we're going to talk about nine steps we're not going to do uh step 10 reversing entries and so what you already started doing in chapter one we did uh this first step we analyzed business transactions using a column form and you also learned uh step number seven you already learned how to prepare financial statements so we kind of skipped with you steps two three four five six but you already know the foundation for step one business transaction analysis, and step seven, financial statement preparations. In chapter two, we're going to learn how to do step two and three, journalize and post. As a matter of fact, these first three steps, analyze transactions, journalize these transactions, and post them to the ledger, we're going to repeat for every transaction during the period. This accounting cycle is done, is completed once a period, and a period could be a month, or could be a quarter, or could be a year. It's uh, uh, repeated every period. So we will repeat this transaction, uh, these steps one to three. At the end of the period, whatever our period is, we will prepare so-called unadjusted trial balance. We're going to learn how to do it in this chapter also. And then in chapter three, we will learn how to adjust and post uh, accounts, prepare adjusted trial balance. You already know how to prepare financial statements. Like this chapter will ask you to do that again, but I'm not going to spend much time here because you we spend a lot of time on financial statements in uh, chapter one. And we will learn how to uh, record closing entries. Uh, that's in chapter three and prepare the post closing post-closing trial balance. So chapter two, again, we'll be doing steps one, two, three, and four. And also it talks again about step seven. So let me go back to the slides. So uh, I'm going to break this lecture in two components. So in this first part, I'm going to talk about accounts, definition. We will review classification of accounts, which we did with you in chapter one types of accounts, what financial statements they are reported on. Um, I will show you the general ledger, uh, the rules for the chart of accounts. And guys, this is the core. This is the most important part of this chapter. We're going to learn how to do a very exciting thing, double entry accounting. We will learn about T accounts, debits and credits. And then guys, the second part, I will talk about journalizing and posting business transactions, which is steps two, steps two and three of the cycle that I just showed you. We actually will do an example of a problem. And then in the second part of the video, we will, we will also prepare a trial balance and I will just briefly review the financial statements and we will finish up with looking at the debt ratio. Okay. So what is a business transaction? This is a definition. These are building blocks of the accounting system. I mentioned it in chapter one. These are exchanges of economic consideration. By economic, I mean they could be expressed in monetary terms between two parties. Uh, in chapter two, we're only going to look at external transactions. They are easy to identify because it's going to be an exchange between us and somebody else. So, for example, we are paying a utilities bill for $100. That's an exchange between us and PG&E. Uh, we are 
performing services on account to credit clients. Again, it's an exchange between our organization and our customers. We're paying salaries to employees. It's an exchange between us and our employees. We're making a purchase of office supplies from, suppl or from Office Depot. Again, it's an exchange between us and Office Depot. All external transactions will have some kind of source document, proof, an invoice, or a sales slip, or a check number that will prove that they took place. In Chapter 3, we have to deal with a more kind of gray area, and these are internal transactions, which will include adjusting and closing entries, and those will occur within the organization. There will, no, there will be no exchange with a second party. So these are pretty much our steps similar to the accounting cycle. Again, uh, this will be given to you, identify transactions. They will be given to you in real world. You have to, world, you have to identify them. Uh, we will have source documents given. Then we're going to use T accounts now to analyze transactions. So instead of the column form that you used in chapter one, you will never see the column form again, the table. We will be using T accounts. I'll talk about them later. And then based on the T accounts, we will journalize the transaction and then we will post it in the ledger and uh, the balances of all accounts in the ledger we will use to prepare a trial balance and then financial statements. So these are examples of source documents and they're important for auditors, for the auditor's trail. So give a definition to an account and how we use those accounts. So accounts are, um, they're like drawers where we put different transactions and every transaction will impact at least two accounts. I mentioned it in chapter one. It's a record of increases and decreases in specific assets, liabilities, uh, equity, revenue, or expense items. So we need to know how every account is classified. So every account will be classified as one of these five groups. Assets, liabilities, stockholders, equity, we're going to abbreviate it SHE, stockholders, equity, revenue, or expense. So that's the first rule you have to remember, how to classify accounts. And then the collection of all accounts, uh, all accounts put together, is called the general ledger. So like I said, every uh, you can think of accounts, you can think of them as drawers, and then specific folders are accounts. So you have assets with cash, accounts receivable, inventory prepaid, uh, supplies, and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is a definition of assets, which comes again from chapter one. This is property or resources that we own or control, and they generate revenues. And then we have liabilities with specific folders. And again, liabilities will have the names payable at the end or the name, the word unearned in the beginning. And these are creditors of my lenders. I'm sorry, these are claims of my lenders, my creditors on my asset. So if I buy a house and I get a mortgage, the amount of the mortgage is a liability called mortgage payable or notes payable because it's the bank's claim on the property, on the house, on the house I have. And equity, or we will call it stockholders' equity, she, these are my owner's claims. And my owners are my stockholders. So it's my stockholders' claims on the company's assets. This is an excellent slide that summarizes which groups of accounts go on which financial statement. So you've got your income statement, which includes revenues and expenses. You've got the statement of retained earnings, which includes the retain, beginning retained earnings plus net income minus dividends. And then you also have got the balance sheet, which includes assets, liabilities, and both, uh, both components of the stockholders' equity, which is common stock, paid in capital, and retained earnings. So this is a great slide to review because I went over uh, all the financial statements in Chapter 1, so feel free to look at it to understand this slide. This is also a review from Chapter 1. So I threw here, I put here a bunch of accounts. I think there is like 
12 accounts in every column, so 24 different accounts. Some of them you will not use until later in the course, but I still want you to be able to identify them. So I want you to pause this slide and I want you to, for every account, I want you to write down the type. So again, we have five types. We have A for assets, L for liabilities, we have she for stockholders' equity, we have R for revenues, and we have E for expenses. So each account you need to be able to classify here. Uh, and then for financial statements, I just want you to identify one of two. Does this account go to the income statement IS or, or is it reported on the balance sheet BS? So assets, liabilities, and she accounts are on the balance sheet. Revenues and expenses are on the income statement account, uh, on the income statement, um, on the income statement, the income statement accounts. So please pause this slide, this screen, uh, this, this video, and fill it in. Please pause. Okay, and here are the answers for all of them. So again, please make sure you understand this classification. We are moving forward and uh, my understanding is that you're comprehending this topic. Okay? So the next one, the ledger. As I, as I said, the ledger is a collection of all accounts, all accounts for a business. And a chart of accounts is a customized list of all accounts that the company uses. It has account titles and account numbers. Every company is free to use different names of accounts. We're using throughout this course the same account titles like cash is cash always, but it doesn't have to be named cash. You can call your account money, you can call this account checking account, you can call it blink blink for all we care. Uh, so accounting rules, GAP, does not care how you name your accounts. What it cares about are concepts and principles. So every business's cash does not have to be numbered 101. However, all assets have to be numbered in 100s. If it's a larger business, assets will be numbered in 1000s. So you will be usually given this chart when you do large problems. Also, if you look at your assets, so 100s are all assets, uh, we list most liquid accounts first, liquidity. So cash is very liquid. You can buy whatever you want with it. But the accounts that we will be using for a long time, such as equipment or land or patents, they will have higher 100 numbers. And of course, 200s are liabilities and 300s are she accounts, stockholders equity accounts, and 400s are revenue accounts. And guys, 500 sometimes expenses here, they give an example of 600 being expenses. So just know those rules. Okay, this is the core uh, of this chapter, the meat and potatoes of this chapter. We're going to talk about debits and credits and explain double entry accounting. So we will think of each account as a T account. Right, so it's a T account is just a nice tool. You will not be able to see T accounts anywhere in the official records of a business, but you will see they're very visual when we are analyzing transactions, especially complicated transactions. So uh, we will put the account title at the top, like cash, and the left side of the account, we will call it debit because it comes from the Latin word debitorum, which does not mean anything here. I don't want you to think about debit cards or selling on de nothing. I just want you to think debit means left in Latin. And we're going to abbreviate it DR because in the Latin version of the word, we have an R, debitorum. So we're going to abbreviate the left side and call it debit and abbreviate it just like this. And the right side, we're going to call, instead of the word right, we're using the Latin word creditorum. Again, the word credit does not mean anything here. It doesn't have any connotations such as positive or negative or good or bad. It just means the right side, and we're going to abbreviate it CR. So, for example, here, for cash, it happens that 
The left side, debit side, is the increase side. And the credit side is a decrease side. So this is debit and plus is on the debit side. Plus is on the left. Instead of left, I say debit. Decrease is credit or right, the right side. So we put all debits on the left. I'm sorry, we put all the increases on the left. We put all the decreases on the right. Then we're going to add up all my increases and we're going to add up all my decreases. And for cash, your increases have to be larger than decreases. So the balance, we will call it normal balance. So the balance must end up on the positive side. Later, you will see that pluses and minuses will change depending on the account. But the balance will always follow the plus. So the normal balance is $4,800. And again, I don't have calculation. We can, we can do the calculation, right? So the left side here, the increases here, uh, $30,000. Let me use it. Uh, let me use, well, I'll use a calculator, which is in front of me. So $30,000 plus $4,200 plus $1,900. So that's 36. So right here, the total increases are 36. 100. This is called a footing, which is a subtotal footing. F O O T T I N G. And the negative side is 2500 plus 26,000 plus 1000 plus 700 plus 900 plus 200. So that's 31. 31,300 negative total decreases. And if I subtract negative from positive, my balance goes on the positive side. 36,100 minus 31,300 equals to 4,800. That's the balance of my account. You can think of it as your checking account, right? These are increases in flows of cash. These are decreases. So the balance must be normal. I mean, can in reality you have a negative balance in your checking ac account? Oh, yes, of course you can. You know, it happened to me when I was a poor student. But in this course, we will only see positive normal balances for all accounts at all times. Okay, so let me set up T accounts now for all groups of accounts, right? So not just cash, but all assets, all assets, have a normal balance on the debit side. What does it mean? It has a plus on the left and minus on the right. So debit and credit. So accounts receivable, cash, equipment, land, supplies, any type prepaid insurance. If it's an asset, it has a balance on the debit side. That's where the plus is. It will have a final balance on the left side. We increase them on the, on the debit side. We decrease them on the credit side. Now, liabilities and stockholders' equity accounts, they are on the other side of the equation. So when we move any amount to the opposite side of the equation, the signs flip. So for liabilities, it's minus plus. Now, debit and credit does not change, right? Debit always stays on the left and credit st stays on the right. What changes are the signs. So accounts payable, wages payable, sales tax payable, unearned revenue, they will have a balance on the right side, on the credit side. Same with the SHE accounts, your retained earnings and your common stock. These are two SHE accounts that we know right now. There will be more later on. They have a decrease on the left and increase on the right. I should stop saying left and right and instead use debit credit. So they will have a normal credit balance. Now, we separated in Chapter 1 revenue accounts, expense accounts, and um, dividend accounts from stockholders' equity. So, revenue accounts, whenever we earn revenue, equity goes up. So, and there is a plus sign right here, right? Revenues increase equity. So, the signs are the same as equities minus plus and again debit on the left and credit on the right let me just say c 
it's faster. But look at the expense accounts and dividend accounts. They have a minus in front of them. They have to use opposite signs. When we have an expense, when expense goes up, it will decrease equity. When we pay dividends, equity goes down. So look at expenses and dividends. Our signs are flipped back to plus minus. Sometimes students don't like it. They say, well, expenses and dividends have the same signs as assets. Why? But that's true, right? Because expenses and dividends are the opposite of equity, and the equity is on the other side of assets. And so, guys, here, this is our language. This is, these are our rules. Again, debit credit does not change. What changes are the signs. And you have three groups of accounts, assets, expenses, and dividends that have a normal balance on the left. On the left, pluses on the left. And you have three groups of accounts, liabilities, revenue, and instead of she, let me say common stock as a representative of equity. Here we have a normal balance on the right side. And guys, this is a mnemonic device I used when I was a student and studied this concept. And it goes as, after eating dinner, comma, let's read comics. So after eating dinner, assets, expenses, and dividends are the left part of the sentence. So plus is on the left, debit. Let's read comics is on the right side of the sentence. So um, liabilities, revenue, and common stock, representative of all equity, have a plus normal balance on the credit side. So these are the rules. And guys, so I have some of the same slides right here that I went through uh, all of the, you know, sh the short version of the accounting equation, the extended version, uh, and then this is kind of the final summary, right? So after eating dinner, let's read comics here with a common stock. Um, we have three groups of accounts with the increases as debits and three groups of accounts with um, where they increase with credits. So let's take a look at page 80 and it's a quick study 2-4, quick study 2-4, page 80. So I have it right here. And guys, here we have to identify the normal balance. So what they again asking, where is the plus? The phrase normal balance identifies positive because the balance will be on the positive side. Debit or credit for each of the following accounts. So your thinking process here, you read the account, you classify it, like right here they say fees earned is a revenue account. And then you think after eating dinner, that's debit. Let's read comics, that's credit. So this is revenue, so it has a normal credit balance. Office supplies is an asset. After eating dinner, after eating dinner, left, debit. Dividends, debit. After eating dinner. Wages, expense, expenses, debit. So again, assets, expenses, and dividends, dividends have a normal debit balance. Accounts receivable is an asset. Prepaid rent is an asset, so they all have normal debit balance. Wages payable is a liability, so it has a normal credit balance. Building is an asset, debit, and common stock is a she account, equity account, so it has a normal credit balance. Here you go. Okay. And then, guys, I'm finishing up right here, uh, and I want to cover the rest of the chapter in the second part of the video. So what we're going to do right now, we have the setup. We know the T accounts. We're going to record transactions in the journal and post entries to the ledger, right? So this is an example of a journal. We actually, I will actually be doing journalizing for you. So the verb is to journalize. The book is called the General Journal. And the second set of books is called the General Ledger. And the verb is called posting. We have to post from journal to ledger. We're going to do it simultaneously. And these are two books the business keeps, hence the, phrase, the word bookkeeping. And guys, the reason we put the same data 
in, in two books because it's sorted differently. In the journal, by the way, the word journal comes from the French jour. Bonjour, bel, bel de jour. Jour means a day. So it's a diary. So we're going to sort data. We're going to sort entries uh, chronologically based on the dates. In the ledger, we will say sort the same data by account. So the ledger will have a separate page or if you think about an Excel file, you have a separate sheet for every account just following the, the, the chart of accounts. You'll have one page or sheet for cash, another one for accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance. And so you run data per account. So by the end of the period, you will know what the balance of each account is. So the definition of journal is right here and the definition of the ledger. And again, you will have source documents, you will have information given to you in transactions. We will do it in part two of the video. Then we're going to use T accounts to analyze transactions. Don't skip this step. This is the most important step, but it's not a part of the official record, right? So students sometimes jump right straight to the journal, which you could do after you practice enough. T account, if you make a mistake in the T accounts, or if you make a mistake rather in the journal, then that mistake will be carried in the rest of the nine steps of your accounting cycle. So we're going to do this four steps, read the transaction, then we're going to analyze it using T accounts, then we're going to journalize it in the general journal, and then right away we're going to post it to the general ledger. And we will do it in part two of the video. Thank you so much.